Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin at the US dollar. This is the four hour chart on Coinbase. And Bitcoin, finally, we've been watching this descending wedge here for the last, uh, well, the last few updates anyway. Um, and Bitcoin finally has decided to break out of this wedge. Now, I thought it might come a little bit lower. If you guys remember, I gave you a, uh, I was expecting price to come down. I gave you a, uh, a an area to ladder in your buys between 3350 and 3250. Uh, we can see that price came down reached a low of 33.40. Um, so if you were following my advice, you did get at least some of your buy orders filled, probably not all of them, but uh, at least you got in the game here. At least you got into some of them. I was actually surprised it didn't come down any lower than this. Um, but the question is whether or not this is a bull trap or whether or not this thing has legs. And of course, the first thing I always tell you is volume is king. So if we come over here and we check out volume for the day, what are we looking at? We're looking at 5.9 billion on the day. That's While that is a little bit of a jump, that's relatively relatively very, very weak volume. Um, so in other words, we're not seeing the kind of volume that we need for a sustainable uptrend yet. Doesn't mean that's not going to come, just means that we're not seeing it there yet. Um, so that's just one thing that we're looking at. We're going to continue to monitor volume and see what price does. The other interesting thing that we're looking at here, guys, is if we kind of zoom in here to this microstructure, uh, and we see that the, the prior pivot high was obviously right back here. So if I go swing high, swing low, let's see if we can kind of make sense of where price um, find, uh, decided to find some uh, initial resistance right here. And we can see that there we go get right on the bottom we can see that it hit perfectly right here off the 382 um and i told you guys uh remember if i told you guys um if you did take this target back here or this uh this buy back here that i would very likely take my profit or excuse me i would very likely take my investment off the table at about 33 or 3450 and we are there right now price is sitting right there at that 3450 mark why did i say that because we can obviously see that there was a lot of resistance right here we just had a lot of order structure uh that was created right back Back here so we knew this was going to be a little bit of a resistance and it also coincides nicely with the 382 fib um, so it came up perfectly has hit that uh, that area um, and if you want it if you it, this really is obviously this is not financial advice you do what you want um, but this is really your call do you want to take your profit off the table and let your uh, and let your or excuse me take your investment off the table and let your profit ride um, or do you want to uh, continue I would at least take some money off the table here um, because again you want to be very conservative if you miss out on some upside that's fine. You haven't lost any money. You've made a little bit of money. No problem at all. You can miss out on some of the upside here. Uh, but what you don't want to do is give up any ground, guys. So I would take, again, just my opinion, I would take some of your investment off the table, if not all of your investment, and then let the profit dry. The next area that we're going to be looking at, if price can break through here, and that's a big if, but if price can break through here, we're going to be watching this next area, which is right here, which I, I told you guys about as well. Obviously, there was a lot of order structure created right here. Um, uh, just look in the past here, we could see that this was going to be a very, very it was a very strong support, should act as a very strong resistance, and we can also see that coincides almost perfectly with the 618 fib level uh, or the golden pocket between the 618 and the 65 fib level. Um, so this should also be another area of uh, of strong resistance, and this is where I would consider just taking um, take your take your investment off the table here, and then go ahead and close your position right here if you are a day and or swing trader. Now, if you are, excuse me, a day or uh, day and scalp trader. Now, if you're more of a swing trader, you want to let the more uh, let it ride. That's going to be a little bit risky, guys. But again, that's your call. This is not financial advice. Personally, we are bucking the trend at this point. We're not seeing any evidence of a reversal yet, even though this descending wedge is certainly a bullish sign. Um, but we've seen that thing, but we've seen that before where price comes up and immediately uh, it creates a bull trap and falls right back down. Um, so again, guys, it's just really your call. I'm more of a conservative trader, so I'll take my profits and run. And if I miss a little bit of upside, I know that there's going to be a lot, um, um, a lot more opportunity going forward to make some money. So I don't mind missing out on some upside, especially if I've made some profit. But again, that's all depending on how you, uh, your, your style of trading. Um, it's been a, my, my style of trading has been very successful for me, but you got to find out what works for you. Um, so we're going to be watching this area here right around the 618 fib. That's a, that's right around, uh, 3550 on Coinbase. It'll vary depending on your exchange, obviously to see if price can get above there. Now, if we can break up above into above 3,600 again on Coinbase, it'll vary depending on your exchange, but if we can get into the, uh, uh up above this resistance, Distance area right here, which is, as I said, right around 3,500, that's going to be significant. Why do I say that? Well, if we pull out here and look at the larger, uh, look at the larger chart. 
And let's pull out to the weekly chart. Um, and I know I've showed you guys this before, but just to reiterate what we're watching here, um, we can see we get we obviously can see that massive bearish trend that we've been in. You know, this little little uptrend we're seeing now is just a not even a blip on the radar. It's really nothing. So this really gives you kind of a lot of perspective. Um, and and you know, if, if this will cure your FOMO, if you do have FOMO at this point, this will cure your FOMO. This tells you that you know obviously this thing is not looking very bullish at all on the weekly chart. Doesn't mean this can't turn into a bullish scenario. It absolutely can. Um, but on the weekly chart, guys, we can see we've got a lot of work to do before we can say that we've reached bottom. And this 3,600 is a very relevant zone. Why do I say that? Because price came down, created a very strong support at 3,600. Um, now it did break it back above it, but what happened? It was support, 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 and then it broke down. And what happened? It started acting as resistance resistance for the second week, resistance for the third week, and then it just fell. So if we can get back above this 3,600, and not, not by a wick, but if we can actually decisively break above 3,600 and start consolidating above 3,600, that would not be insignificant, guys. Um, but until that happens, I'm very skeptical of this move. So we want to we want to watch that $3,600 um, um, resistance as well as volume. If we can break above 3,600 with volume, that's going to be an extremely, extremely bullish sign. All right, zooming back into the daily chart, guys. Um, one of the things that I've been pointing out as well in my last few updates, um, looking at the daily MACD um, in uh, in relation to uh, to price. If we look at price, clearly we've created a series. Obviously, looking at this descending support line here, we've created a series of lower lows as price has fallen down here. If we look at the MACD, what do we have? We can see that we've created a series of higher lows on the MACD. So we have bullish divergence, which I've pointed out, um, and it looks like it may be um, finally um, finally playing out is that bullish divergence. In fact, if we look over here at the signal line MACD line, we can see that it's finally broken up. Um, uh, they, they finally crossed. We can see that the uh, histogram is finally broken into bullish territory. Um, so all that is a bullish sign, guys, and it's not insignificant. It is something that we're certainly keeping an eye on. Looking at the four hour MACD, we can see that we've broken out of that kind of uh, series of lower highs and higher lows. That compression that we were getting on that four hour RSI has finally been broken above. And we can see that we're now in overbought territory. So we may see a little bit of a um, of a correction here in the short term. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that ends up playing out. Uh, what we're going to be watching if this thing does end up correcting, and we're still continuing up here as I, uh, as I, as I talk here, guys, we may get a decisive break above that uh, that area that we were watching right uh, right here, the top of that area, which sits right at around uh, 34, really right around where price is sitting right now, right around uh, 3480, 3500. So we get a decisive break above. By decisive, I mean a four hour candle opening and closing above that zone. Not just a wick, guys, but a four hour candle opening and closing, not just opening, not just closing, but opening and closing above that zone. That would be a decisive break. If that does happen, guys, it could probably be a very quick rise to at least 3550. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that ends up playing out here. Um, but uh, but we, we are kind of keeping an eye on this, guys. And um, if we do have a bit of a correction, what we're going to be watching, if we do decisively break above this zone, is we want what, what was resistance to start acting as support. Um, so in other words, we're going to be watching this little, this uh, this zone right here. Let me just kind of draw a little horizontal ray right here on it. We're going to be watching that area right here. Um, and if, if we decisive, we've broken above it. Now, if we can come back down, retest it, and that starts acting as support, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign, guys. We'll have to wait and see if that kind of does happen but right now you know right now things are looking good let's go ahead and refresh volume to see if we're getting some uh, some increase in volume and we are a little bit of uptick in volume so right now things are going in the right direction we'll have to wait and see how that plays out let's come over and look at shorts versus longs shorts are starting to drop off even though we've had this little uptick in shorts and really we've been having traders hedge their bets we had this uptick in shorts at the same time looking at longs have been clearly stacking and continue to stack um, and so so this has been kind of uh, again trade Traders have been hedging their bets, knowing that a bigger move was coming. They just didn't know if it was going to be up or down. And I've been telling you guys for about a week now, or no, sorry, about for about uh, three days now, that a larger move is coming, and that finally is is uh, is here. Um, and so uh, traders were hedging their bets, not knowing if it was going up, not knowing if it was going down. And I still think, as is evident by uh, the shorts, not just collapsing here, but uh, you know, a little bit of a drop off, which you would expect as stop losses are hit. But still, some shorts are are holding on to their positions. They're not convinced yet that this isn't a bear trap. And that is smart. 
Um, but what I don't like to see is I don't like to see longs continuing to stack here because if longs continue to stack here, longs are already outpacing shorts. If shorts start to fall off and longs continue to stack and volume remains relatively low, that's all a recipe for market makers to bring that. That's a recipe for a bull trap market makers to trap people into their long positions and then just collapse price. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying you need to continue to monitor longs, you need to continue to monitor short, and you need to continue to monitor both of those in relation to volume. Um, always, always keeping an eye on everything, not and not getting fixated on any one thing. I'm a pilot, guys, and we look at different instruments, and we say never get fixated on any one instrument because while that gives you um, very, very valuable information, it's not the whole puzzle, and you need to take into account the whole puzzle. If you just look at one piece of information, guys, you can get fixated on that. It can be looking good while everything else is looking bad, but if you're not looking at everything in conjunction with the one instrument, then that's just bad information. Um, so anyway, not to get not to get off on that. Um, so anyway, guys, just kind of wanted to give you a uh, um, an idea of what I'm looking at and what you should be looking at, in my opinion. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. Let's go ahead and look at EOS very quickly. EOS had this nice major breakup above 245. I told you guys 245 was the area to watch without question. And it was, we had a decisive break above, and it's no coincidence that uh, while we did have a decisive break above, it found resistance right at that 270 mark, right where our uh, resistance area has been drawn all along. Um, so again, no coincidence at all. Now, I was expecting a little bit of more of a drop on EOS. In fact, I was looking for it to drop into around 220. Um, that didn't happen. The low was about 232, um, so I missed that by about 12 cents. Um, but price did massively break up above our 245 resistance every and just the way you'd like to see it and found resistance right where it made sense right at that 270 mark um, and if we look at the uh, this smaller order structure here and we go swing high swing low let's see if it looks like it's uh, creating structure in the market and certainly it is it hit perfectly right inside that golden pocket right inside that golden ratio between the 618 ratio which is the golden ratio and that 65 fib level that area in between is called the golden pocket and that's exactly where price hit so if we can break up above that area if we can get the decisively above that area. In other words, we can break into about, let's say, 275, 280 decisively into that area, guys, and start consolidating there. That's going to be an extremely bullish sign. Until we break above that, I'm going to consider this a possible bear, a bull trap, guys. So if you took if you took this trade down here, you may want to consider at least taking your investment off the board, um, if not closing your position. You had a nice little, um, you had a nice little, um, um, uh, percentage point increase here, guys. Certainly you did, especially if you bought down here at that 230 level um, and you're selling at about 269, 270. That's a nice little profit. Certainly nothing to, to shake a stick at. So, I mean, you consider taking at least your investment off the board and letting your profits ride. Again, if you miss out on some upside, that's no problem, guys. There's going to be a lot of opportunity. But if you lose, start losing money or start giving back the ground that you've taken without taking at least some profit along the way, guys, then you're you you know then you're just giving into, uh, into FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. And you never want to trade on fear of missing out, guys. You just don't want to do it. To be thankful for the profit that you've taken um, or for the profit that you've made and know that you'll make more profit going forward. And if price just explodes, you, you didn't do the wrong thing by selling down here, guys. You really didn't. Hindsight is always 2020. If you're if you're dependent on hindsight, you're never going to be a successful trader. A successful trader knows when to cut their losses, knows when to to uh, to um, take profit. Um, and so, anyway, guys, I'm, I don't mean to lecture to you. You guys know, especially if you watch my videos for any amount of time, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to sit here and lecture you guys any further. So what I'm going to be watching with EOS guys, what was support should or was resistance should start acting as support. So let's see if it does. I'm going to be watching this area right here. Right between that 245 and 255 level, guys. If that starts acting as support, that's going to be extremely bullish. If we break down below that area again, guys, obviously this was just a bull trap. Um, so that's the area I'm going to be kind of watching, guys. If certainly if we can break above, what's going to be extremely bullish, guys, is if we can break above three dollars. If we can get above three dollars, guys, that would be a massive break up above what is currently a, um, a major supply zone. A lot of sell orders sitting right in here. How do I know that? Because we saw price came up in here uh, immediately was rejected. Price came up again, wicked up, immediately rejected, wicked up, immediately rejected, wicked up again, immediately rejected. That tells me that right in that area, right here, 
we've got a lot of sell orders that are still sitting here waiting. So if we can break up above that, uh, uh, at least up above $3, really above $3.15, obviously that's going to be an extremely, extremely bullish sign. We'll have to wait and see if that ends up playing out. But right now, things are looking rather bullish. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, volume for EOS as of right now. Let me refresh this. Volume on EOS is sitting at about uh, 822 million. I'd like to see daily volume well above 1 billion to know that new money is entering this market. And really that needs to happen on a consistent basis, not just today. Uh, but we need to consistently to be above 1 billion on volume, really 1.5 billion, but I'll take up above 1 billion consistently for now. Um, but we still do have an uptick um, and it's not the kind of volume that I'd like to see for a sustainable bull run, but it is ticking up and let's see if it gets there. Um, it may never get there. It may. So this is just something that you kind of want to continue to watch. All right, quickly looking at Ethereum, guys. Ethereum came down. I was telling you that if we broke below 100, that $100 psychological support, that that would be an extremely bearish sign. We'd probably find ourselves down at $95 to $80 very, very quickly. That did not happen. We came back down. We hit that $100 support right here. Price came up, price came back down, double bottom once again, bouncing off that $100 support, and then just took off. And that's exactly the kind of bullish takeoff that you'd like to see. Bullish takeoff, if that's a term. That's exactly the kind of bullish bounce that you would like to see. And we can see that it's finding a little bit of resistance right here, but that the major area of resistance that I'm going to be watching, guys, where there's a decent amount of sell orders is right here. Right between about 124 and 130. Right in that area, guys, we can see. How do I know that? Because price came up, immediately rejected right back down. Came up, wicked into it, immediately rejected. Came up, wicked into it, rejected. Came up, wicked into it, rejected. So what does that tell me? Again, just like uh, just like EOS tells me, there's a lot of sell orders that are sitting right in here. So if price can break at least into this zone and start consolidating, certainly if it can break above it, that's going to be a very, very bullish sign. Until that does happen, this might be a temporary bull trap, and you may want to start taking your profit. I, I would definitely start taking my profit along the way here. Um, um, same re same reasoning as before, but this is the area that I'm going to be watching. And it can, if we come over here and we look at this swing high, swing low from this latest little microstructure, what do we see? We can see that right now we're hitting almost perfectly right there off that 618 fib level, guys. So if we can get above this 618 fib level here um, and break into this zone, certainly if we can get above that 618 fib level, but really if we can break into this zone here, that's going to be an extremely, extremely bullish sign. We'll have to wait and see if we can do that. But right now things are looking uh, things are looking rather bullish. Let's see if that can continue to the upside. All right, and I'm going to quickly end looking at XRP, looking at Ripple. Uh, Ripple, as we know, we were watching a falling wedge, very similar to uh, Bitcoin. In fact, I'm going to come out here and look at the daily chart because uh, it kind of plays a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we've been watching this falling wedge again, very similar to uh, to Bitcoin. Uh, watching this falling wedge here, guys, and price did end up breaking above it. Um, now on the daily chart, we haven't yet to have a decisive break above. We've seen this before. We've seen where price wicked above it, actually going all the way back here to. November. We wicked above it here, wicked above it here again in December, wicked above it here again in January, wicked above it here again late January, and now we're, we're above it now. Excuse me, we're above it now, and let's wait and see if we can uh, if this is sustainable. As of right now, I'm not calling that a decisive break. I'm looking at the daily chart, not the four-hour chart, because of this overall structure is um, it does go all the way back so far that the daily chart really is the chart to be watching um, to verify that we have decisively broken out of this descending wedge. As of now, we're certainly out of it, but this may end up just being a wick. We'll have to wait and see if this daily candle can close above here. If it does, obviously that's going to be an extremely bullish sign. Until it does. Uh, we don't have the kind of volume that we need to sustain a bull run yet. Doesn't mean it won't come, but it just means as of right now, we're not seeing it. I'm going to be watching again the uh, the air, uh, so small little supply zones. We're currently hitting a supply zone now right here. Actually, we're not quite hitting it yet, but we're getting there. How do I know? Once again, wick, 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 broke down, wick, 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 broke down. So a lot of sell orders sitting right here. The stronger supply zone that we're going to be watching, though, really is right up here. This area between about 38 cents and uh, 41 cents. This is a strong supply zone, guys. Same reasons. Wick, wick, wick. Broke down. Haven't been able to decisively break above since this area here. So this is the area that I'm really going to be watching. So both these areas, um, this area, certainly if we can get above, let's call it 35 cents, would be an extremely bullish sign. Until that happens, I'd consider this a possible bull trap. And I would certainly take your profits along. So it takes at least some profit along the way if you have taken this trade. But really, we're going to be watching this area right here for a possible reversal. Uh, 
um, to see if we come up, hit this zone, and we get an immediate rejection right back down, or if this thing can carry up above that 41 cent, at least on Bitfinex, of above 41 cents. If it does decisively, guys, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign. If not, um, again, I would expect a possible, um, at least a, a um, um, a retesting of this zone here. If we can get above this zone here and this zone starts acting as support, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign, even if we don't break above this. If we do break back down below this zone or if we're unable to break up above this zone here, then obviously, guys, this thing could be very, very short-lived and we could just come up back right into this descending wedge pattern here. And this could just end up being just like it was here, just like it was here, just like it was here, where we just have a, a very temporary wick up above this zone only to continue um, the uh, the downtrend. So we'll have to kind of watch, wait and see if this happens. I'm not really seeing a good trade up set, up set up with Ripple at the moment, guys. I would just kind of, if you have taken a trade on Ripple, I would consider, as I said, at least taking some profits off the uh, off the board at this point. Um, but again, you guys do what you want. This is not financial advice. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upload if you have enjoyed this content. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.